According to the Joint Economic Committee of the United States Congress, women often have to pay substantially more than men for similar goods and services. Common products and services marketed to women, ranging from razors to cleaning products, often cost more than similar products marketed to men. In some cases, the only difference is the color. This markup has become known as the pink tax. In this video, we will address two components of the pink tax which place an unfair financial burden on women. We like to call the two components the de facto tax and the de jure tax. First, let's address the de facto pink tax. This is the elevation of prices on anything marketed to women as compared to products marketed to men, or in some cases, the higher price of the same product in pink. This can often be seen in the higher price that women pay for razors, for example. And these price differences apply to more than just personal care products as well. Overall, women pay a higher price 42% of the time when shopping. One of our team members went to a local CVS store to see how the pink tax plays out while shopping. Hi everyone, so I'm here in CVS right now, um, taking a look at some of the price differences in men's versus women's products in the shampoo aisle. So let's take a look at what I've found, shall we? So looking here at Slav Men's, they've got two for one for only $4.99 versus I'm guessing that women are the default in this case because women are the ones who obviously care too much about how they smell or something. I don't know. But then we've got women's for $6.29. Now, I don't know about you, but that does definitely look like a difference to me. I'm now here in the digestive health aisle. Let's take a look at this. Um, the only obvious difference I can see is this is blue and this is pink. Everything else seems the exact same. Um, but as you can clearly see, the blue one is less expensive than the pink one. I wonder why. Wow, even stool softeners. I can already hear some of the rebuttals on the other side of the screen, though. Maybe it's just this CVS, right? Well, let's visit Walmart and Rite Aid's websites to compare pricing. Unsurprisingly, the results are the same. You can see the pink tax at work in each of these cases. We see consistently that the products marketed for men are less expensive. This doesn't just apply to personal care items. There was a study done by Old Navy that showed that women's plus-sized clothing is more expensive than men's plus-sized clothing. As you can see, the de facto pink tax is present in many sectors and makes its way into many of your purchases. Isn't that crazy? At this point, I'm sure you're wondering, why are products marketed to women more expensive? One proposed explanation for the pink tax is something called price elasticity. The idea is women are considered less price elastic, which means they rely on trusted brands and don't change their preferences even if the prices are increased. In contrast, men are considered more price elastic. So when companies raise prices, they switch to other brands. Whether this explanation is true or not, women should not be paying more for the same products with prettier packaging or special scents, especially when it has been proven that they are paid less per dollar when compared to men. Now let's focus on the price of sanitary products. According to Jezebel, it's estimated that menstruators spend upwards of $120 per year on sanitary products, not including the pain meds and all the other things people need to deal with their periods. Keep in mind that menstruation occurs for an average of 40 years over the course of a menstruator's lifetime. Now imagine you're a menstruator on a very tight budget where that money could be split up to go to rent and food. Hygiene products that are absolutely necessary should not be taxed, especially when condoms are handed out everywhere at college campuses and health fairs like candy. Speaking of candy, chocolate bars aren't taxed in California, but tampons are, according to Period Equity. Even more bizarre is that entry fees for rodeos are untaxed in South Dakota, but tampons are. Personally speaking, I feel like periods are much more relevant to a much larger population than rodeos. Several states have considered repealing the tax recently, and some have, but the measure has failed in many cases because of financial concerns. In response to this, the tax-free period campaign was formed, demanding all states to eliminate tampon taxes by tax day 2021. So what can we do about this? For the de facto pink tax, one passive thing we could do is just buy the cheapest thing available, most likely the men's, because it probably works as well, if not better than the woman's version, which is very ironic as many women have claimed that men's razors work better. 
Instead of going to the default women's section and buying things just because it's Dove or because it's labeled women's, buy the men's version and save a couple of bucks. On the other hand, some more active and political things we could do to change both of these taxes is vote on legislation that bans taxes on sanitary products, as we mentioned some already have. We could demand, in the form of petitions, boycotts, etc., for these companies to start pricing their items more fairly and to stop women from spending more money because they want to smell like lavenders rather than Axe body spray. By the way, why has there been a decision to market certain scents to specific genders? Why is smelling like grease manly and why is smelling like lavender feminine? Excuse me for wanting to smell good.